in, Mr. Wallace. Lock's broken. I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Wallace. Well, you sure are taking advantage of me. <laughs> this picture alone is worth fifty dollars. Lies. Gil. Gil favor. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I was expecting somebody else. Gil, um, sit down. Hmm? Oh, oh, just, just a minute. Take that. Oh, for you. Sit down. How are you? Okay. Uh, why don't we have a drink? Uh, come on, come on, come, come on. Well, well, Gil, it's. Hey, gosh, it's good to see you. Tell me all about yourself. Here you are. Uh, what brings you to this part of the woods, huh? Driving a herd to Denver. Army's got us held up a few miles west of here. A little car with trouble. I had some time on my hands, so. Well, it couldn't have worked out any better. Say, if if you had a uh, if you had a waited another week, we'd have missed each other. Hey, um, what happened, Lodge? Oh, that's uh, bad cards and good whiskey. <laughs> ah, but uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm I may be down, but oh, sir, I still got plenty of bounce in me. I got plenty of bounce. Well, this is run down a little, but it shouldn't take too much work to fix it up. I'll uh, tell you the truth, it's, uh, it's not mine anymore. The bank foreclosed on me last week. They give me a month to clear out. See, uh, I've got some money in a bank in San Antonio. Not ain't much, but... Ah, thanks, thanks, Gil, but hand out won't do me any good. No, I, I need something more substantial. What I gotta do, I gotta start ranching again some other place. Some place where people don't know me. Some place where I don't have a reputation to live down. Got a place in mind? Colorado. How come Colorado? Because that's where you're going. Well, I don't see what my going there has anything to do with it. You know? Come on, I'll show you what. See those cattle? 30 of them. That is all I own in the world. But I did it before, Gil. I can do it again. I started this ranch 15 years ago with 30 head of cattle. And I built it up to 50,000. You remember? Oh, I remember. Well, I can do the same thing with those 30, if you'll let me drive them to Colorado with you. Those? I don't know, Lige. I... Thought you wanted to help me, Gil. Yeah, I do, but... But you're not going to. Glass, you know how much I appreciate what you've done for me. I want to help you. Forget it, Gil, forget it. I, I didn't realize I was asking so much. After all, I'm not asking you to drive 2,000 head like I used to. Hmm? Now, you know how bad it is to mix herds in the middle of a drive. I'm sorry I asked you. Well, if, if you will excuse me, Gil, I, uh, I'm expecting somebody else. Uh, real nice to see you. Oh, come on, lie. All right, all right, you win. Gil, I knew you wouldn't let me down, not you. <laughs> Look, sure, not, not, not after all I, I done for you. Or not after all we've been through together, huh? Gil, I, I'll never forget this. Well, look, Lies, uh, ranching and droving ain't the same. Can be rough. Oh, no, no. Come on. <laughs> you, you don't scare me. I'll hold up my end of the stick. You don't have to worry about me. And there's rules, Lige. Expect them to be obeyed. First off... Uh... I know, I know. <laughs> it seems like old Mr. John Bollycorn is always at the head of the list. <laughs> always. <laughs> Plus no maverick and no strays. More time and trouble than they're worth. One last thing, honey. I give the orders. Understood? Well, you're the boss, Gil. Whatever you say goes. Look here, I, I don't want any special favors. No, sir. 
<laughs> I'll eat what the men eat. I'll sleep where the men sleep. I'll stand guard at night. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Look, we're right over that ridge. Be ready to have your kettle to move out at daybreak. I'll send a couple men over to help you. Good luck, Lige. Hope you find what you want. Thank you, Gil. Uh, what do you say we have a drink on that, huh? No, oh, come just... on, come on, come on. We're not on the drive yet. <laughs> there you are. For old time's sake, huh? Old time's sake. is back with that new bunch. About time. Now, when you said Crowling's bunch was a draggle tail group, you weren't just being polite. Oh. Pasture cows always trouble the first day out. Well, as long as it's only the first day, we have got enough trouble without... Yeah, and less standing here ain't gonna solve any of our problems. Get out there and get them tacked on. Joe, you get up to point. Get them strung out. <laughs> in horned elephants. I sure don't like the looks of those cattle. Well, we ain't passing out blue ribbons for the looks. We're driving them, not judging them. Well, I may be wrong, but you know what kind of cattle those are. Look, we're sure paid to cook, not judge cattle. Now, when I want your advice on the merits or demerits of the cattle, I'll come and ask you. Until then, get packed and get rolling. Wishbone, I haven't seen cattle like that before. Just hope you never see any more of them. They are called Kerencias. What's that mean? Pasture cattle. Don't like to be moved. Better word for them is trouble. The thing about Kerencias, the further away from home they get, the worse they get. Yeah, you might say the same thing about Mr. Favor. We better get packed before he gets any worse. the boys down. First day out, no. But I sure couldn't do much driving with a foot like this now, could I? Never heard of anybody kicking his herd to market. <laughs> to keep these granite heads moving. Yeah, well, just don't go putting ideas in my heads. All right, it's just the first day. They'll be all right as soon as their trail broke. Oh, I'm a drover, not a mule skinner. We're working like a pack of donkeys. There's His Royal Highness riding up ahead with a wishbone like he owned half the state of Texas. Yeah, well, his new boots gave him a blister. Yeah, well, his saddle's given me one. They wish, uh, how would you like to go part interest on my new ranch, huh? I, uh, I, I give you 25% for $100. But I'll do better than that. 50 50? How's that? What do you say, partner? No. Long day. Now, don't remind me. Oh, it's the craziest bunch of stock I ever worked in my life. It was like rounding up a bunch of bees. It's all in a day's work. We lost ground today means everybody up bright and early first thing in the morning. That just doesn't make sense. Why'd the boss do it? Just ain't like him to let something interfere with the drive. Yeah, that crowning sure turned out to be a dead weight. Why not, when he's got jackasses like us to do all of his work? Well, now that you mention it, Joe, there is sort of a resemblance. <laughs> Must be them ears, Joe. They do kind of stick out a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well then, good evening, boys. Good evening. <laughs> Mind if I join you? Looks like you already have. What any better? <laughs> you asked me that in the morning. <laughs> a coffee, Mr. Crowning? Well, if you've got nothing stronger. 
<laughs> Browning, maybe the boss didn't tell you, but he... Oh, won't... now, now, now. I was only joking. Sure. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. Oh, yeah. Maybe I never actually rode the trail myself. But I have sent thousands of cattle up north. Ooh, let me see. I had more than 50 hands working for me on my ranch at the same time. 100 at roundup time. What happened? How about that coffee, Mopey? His name's Mushy. <laughs> Don't mind me. You know, I was always terrible with names. I am just terrible. You know those 50 hands I was telling you about? I'd be lucky if I could remember 10 of their names. <laughs> I thank you. But you just ask Gil sometime. He'll tell you why. You know, it used to take a man all day long just to ride from one end of my ranch to the other. You still didn't tell us what happened. Well, now, that would uh, take more time to tell than you got to listen. Let's just say that I mismanaged my affairs. All right with me. Quiet down, you slap out of your head! Shift tonight. Hey, that suits me. I told Gil when I started out I didn't want any special favors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think your ramrod likes me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Does he think I deliberately slept in last night? Never was much for mind reading. What do you think? I think we got some cows to punch. God! Yeah. <laughs> think they are? Kiowa, seems the lieutenant was right. One thing's for sure, they're not just sitting up there for the view. Yeah, looking's one thing, taking something else again. Pass the word, I want a rifle in every boot. But no shooting, unless they ask for it. Right. as fine a seed animal as I've ever seen. Well, just forget it, Cronin. Boss said no maverick in there. I'll take it, Mr. Favor. You just take care of the drag. Cronin! Well, looking at him, he 
ain't gonna stop him. You no strings. I'm sorry. Gil. You're sorry. Look, I, I, I won't do it again, Gil. I promise. <laughs> My knee. I, I must have twisted it. Right, you stay here. I'll send Mushy back for you. What are you waiting for? You want to stay here and hold his hand? Kiowas and then Corinthians, and, and now a cripple. Yeah. Who'd you say was going to take that first guard? Fine, Doctor. I'll be up and around in the morning. Mountain lion following us. Be rough on stragglers. Stragglers? You mean my cattle, don't you? You always was a good shot, Lige. Thought you might go after him as soon as the sun's up. Can't spare anybody else. Yeah, you just leave that cat to me. I'll take care of him. And uh, don't make too wide a swing. Saw some kai with this morning. Mr. Crowney? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh... I'm feeling a little better. I think I'll be trying out this leg of mine pretty soon. I'm well, glad to hear it, sir. Oh, now, look, you don't have to give me any of that sir business. I'm just one of the boys. You know, you mustn't let this fancy outfit fool you. Matter of fact, it's the only suit of clothes I had left. And see these boots? These last pair of good boots I own. Well, they're mighty nice. Mighty muddy, you mean. Hey, I, I, I was just thinking, if you got a minute, maybe you wouldn't mind uh, cleaning them up for me. I'd do it myself. I wouldn't ask you, except uh, the, the, my head is just giving me fits. Well, I was supposed to help Mr. Wishbone clean up. I don't suppose he'd mind, though. Oh, it only take a minute. I won't forget you. Thank you, Mopey. <laughs> my name ain't Mopey. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Mushy, I forgot. <laughs> no offense. No. Oh, I wonder if you'd uh, mind hand me those saddlebags, please. Thanks, Mopey.
Pancho! Senor, not all Mexicans are called Pancho. We have many other names. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, but I can never remember what they are. <laughs> no offense, of course, but they all sound like Pancho to me. <laughs> oh, nothing matter with Pancho, is there? Now you take my name, Lige. You ever hear of a stupider name in all your life? <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. Maybe for a minute. You, uh, you play cards? Poker, blackjack. Well, what do you say we lay out a few hands, huh? Just to pass the time. Low stakes. Well, uh... All right, senor, uh, but uh, only for a few hands. Just to pass the time. <laughs> you know, win a dollar, lose a dollar. Carta, senor, one more. Bastante. Jack again. Oh, that's too bad. I know how you feel. I've done plenty of losing myself. Malas suerte. Hey, hey, now, now, now. Don't be a sore loser. I am only angry at myself for playing. Huh? All right. Hey, you are. Take the money back. I don't want any hard feelings. happen every night. Put more men on them tomorrow night. I can't do that. I'm rotating the men every four hours the way it is now. I'm too tired to argue about it. Just do it. Boss. Yeah? The men need a rest. I've been thinking. Look, we've lost enough time as it is. We're moving out at daybreak. Anything else? Yeah. I just stopped thinking. over there by myself, you know, you get to talking to yourself. <laughs> what could have happened to anybody? You don't think I fell off that horse on purpose, do you? No, it's just the brakes of the game. That's the way things go. There are 20 men on a drive, and I had to be the one to fall and twist my knee. That's the way my luck's been going lately. Yeah. Look, I know it's just as hard for you fellas as it is for me, but I tell you what, I'll make it up to you. I'll work twice as hard just as soon as I'm able to be up and around on this knee. Well, I... I know I don't look it, maybe, but I can ride with the best of them. You ask Gil if I can't. Gil will tell you. Mr. Favor to you. Stay awake anyway. Oh, why? I really rode in a couple hours. Well, this stuff will keep you awake. It won't do anything else. Ooh, did I tell you that is terrible? It's just like pure alkali. Well, it wets down the dust. How'd you like something to wash down the dust, huh? Like what? Watch and wait, my friend. Watch and wait.
Wiggins. Here you are. Presto. The magic elixir guaranteed to cut any dust anywhere, anytime. I'll drink coffee. Oh, come on, come on. I'm just trying to be friendly. That's the reason I brought this along in the first place. I was going to pass it around among all the boys. All right, all right. If they are too good to drink with me, that just means there is more for you and me. Ah, oh, come on. Nobody will know. Just don't sit there looking at it. Hmm? <laughs> well, if you're not going to drink it, give it to me. Well, maybe one won't hurt, huh? Nah, nah, of course not. <laughs> Just enough for one drink apiece. What do you say we kill a soldier, huh? You bet. Very, very, very. Let's have a little toast. Why not? Why not? To Colorado. And the founding of a new crowning ranch. Oh, Colorado. No, 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 no. Colorado. All right, oh. <laughs> well, I got me one friend anyway, huh? Look at here, Quince. If you ever need a job or anything, you just let me know. Get in touch with me. I'll take care of you. If everything goes the way I expect it will in Denver, right? you just, just let me know. Remember, I was the first one to give Gil a job, Boston. Good dish. Uh oh. Gotta get rid of this, huh? How in the world would you. Good night, amigo. <laughs> My boy, here is a tip for you. Oh, oh no, sir, that's all right. <laughs> Seems like that cat's getting awful close. <laughs> I got something that'll stop him. <laughs> This'll stop him. Well, that's a mighty fine looking rifle. The best, the very best. It's a Henry repeater. Accurate, up to 100 yards. Of course, you have to be a real man to know how to handle these things. But I needn't tell you anything about that. A drover like you, why, you probably cut your teeth on a shooting iron, huh? Well, I do know which end of <laughs> Modesty, the mark of a true frontier. Do that. Ooh, that leg, that leg. That was too bad about that cat. I was going to go and get him come to sun up, but with this leg, I don't. Oh, I sure hate to let Mr. Favor down. Well, my lions could be mighty dangerous around to hurt. Yes, indeed. Uh, we, well, maybe I'll feel better in the morning. Oh, oh, Mopey, would you mind checking over this rifle for me? You know, I wouldn't want to have a misfire with only one leg under me. Well, certainly, Mr. Crummy. One leg. That's all right. I'll make it, Mopey. I'm the only one they got.
Hey, Jim, come on, it's your trick. Jim, come on, wake up, it's your turn. Where'd you get it, Jim? Come on. Where'd you get it? Yeah, amigo, amigo, partner, partner, partner. What are you doing up? Huh? I couldn't sleep. What are you about? Oh, no, I was just going to get uh, Scarlet to uh, replace me on the guard. Scarlet? Yeah. But Quince was leaving you. Oh, no. Well, see, Quince, he don't feel too good. And uh, I don't mind. No, Scarlet won't mind. There's no problem. No, hey, uh, no, really, there's no problem. I, I, I it, 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 no. Quince? Look, you're jumping to conclusions. Dead down. I'll take his watch. You can't fire a man without hearing his side of it, especially Jim. When I say no drinking on the drive, that's what I mean. Well, it might not have been his fault. You don't know. Oh, yeah, sure. Somebody held a gun on him and forced the whiskey down his throat. Sure. From smelling you, it's pure sour mash. Now, where is it? Well, you know, it's against the rules to pack whiskey. At least that's what Gil told me. I asked you a question, Crowning. I don't want to ask you again. All right, all right. It's gone. It's all gone. So is Clint's gone. Ah, oh, come on, Ramrod. Don't take everything so serious. All right, so maybe you did catch Jim a little drunk. What are you going to do, turn him into Gil? I don't have to. He already knows. Gil knows? That's right. He just got through fire and quints. He, he can't do that. He, not in the middle of a drive. You don't know your old friend, Gil. He just did it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you can start out by telling Gil where the whiskey came from. No, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Look, Yates, you got to understand. Colorado. Colorado. That's all I got left. It's not right, Roddy. You gotta talk to him again. Can't do that. You know how the boss feels about the drinking on the job? Look at that, if it isn't the bluebird of the morning. All chirpy and chipper. Uh, no sermons, just coffee. Like a little whiskey in it? Oh, don't, Roddy. Thank you, Bush. Hey, where's Mushy? Beats me. I had to get him chop my own wood this morning. Can't depend on anybody anymore. Just don't say nothing. I've been up all night trying to get up enough guts to tell Gil. I just can't. There's nothing to tell. Uh, look, when we get to Denver, I'll make your partner. 
50-50, how's that? Why, in three or four years, you could buy and sell these cowpokes. Why don't you quit dreaming, Crowley? Colorado's no different than Texas, and men don't change. Only the scenery. How about that cat? Gil. All right. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll settle it right away. Minutes. Thought I told you to fire Quince. I did. And what's he still doing here? He's riding with us till we cross the river. It's free range, ain't it? You got something to say? Spit it out. You won't like it. Well, I'm still listening. Well, it's about Quince and your old friend Crowning. <laughs> Didn't know you sent anybody out for that cat? I did, but he ain't gone yet. Your rifle, Eyes. I, I gave it to Mushy. Mushy? You mean that fool's up there all by himself? Let's go. I'm going with you. Uh, I, I didn't tell him to go. How's he doing? Oh, fine. This head's too hard to crack. Just a few dents in it. Well, it's about time you came around. All right. What happened? I, I, I just don't know, Gil. Mr. Favor, it wasn't his fault. He didn't tell me. How much you didn't get the idea to be a big game hunter all by yourself? Let's have it. Yeah, maybe I didn't tell you, Mushy. But I gave you the rifle, and I gave you the idea. I, yeah, I, I may just as well have said it myself. I, I admit it, Gil, it was my fault. The same thing goes for Quince there, too. That whiskey, Gil, that, that was my whiskey, but I, I just meant it to be a friendly little nightcap. Oh, and what was you planning for Mushy? A friendly little funeral? Gil, I was wrong. I admit it, but it won't happen again. I mean it this time. But so do I. You're through. No, I promise, Gil. You promise? How many times you got to use a word before you wear it out? No, no more crowning. Uh, this time you stand or fall all on your own, no more having a fool like me to lean on. Gil, I didn't mean it that way. It's always been that way with you, ain't it? People are just there for you to take, to use, or to step on. Well, no more crowning, they're gonna step back. Roddy, cut out his beat. Line him south. Quince, you're back on point. Rest you get on the herd. He was just as well, huh? Gil always was a pretty good judge of his own men. Oh, and Rowdy, uh, never mind bunching my cows. They'll go on home all by themselves. Uh, how are you feeling now, Mushy? Uh, just fine, Mr. Connie. Sure am sorry. Sorry. 
Uh, that's just a word. You remember what Gil said. Here, you keep this. You earned it. Good luck, Bushy. Same to you, Mr. Cody. Morning, Jesus. <laughs> hey, I got your name right that time, didn't I? You still mad at me about what happened last night? Senor, you can put your cards away. I have no more money. I cheated you, Jesus. I marked this deck. I guess that's the only way I can win at cards. When you lose as often as I do, you don't care how you win, just so long as you win. Here. Oh, go on, it's yours. Thank you, senor. Now, how about tightening up the sense on that horse, huh? Si, senor. Better get back to the herd. Want me help? No. No, I'll take care of lies. For old time's sake. Six months, maybe longer. Uh-huh. Recurrent pain behind the eyes, impairment of peripheral vision, and uh, dizzy spells, huh? <laughs> Doc, you'll either have to spell it out or aim me to the nearest dictionary. 
I'm afraid there isn't much doubt, Mr. Maxton. Glaucoma, a disease of the eye, characterized by the hardening of the eyeball and gradual loss of sight. How much longer? Well, with the right care and as much rest as possible, maybe a year or two. Yeah. Of course, I could be wrong. There are specialists back east. Thanks, Doc. How much do I owe you? Oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's no charge. Oh, I pay my own way. Thanks. Just leave Beyond the sun over the mountain, there are long waiting for me. Why, Gil Faber! Now you're the last Texas Jack I expected to bump into. Mr. Maxson, been a long time. Oh, come on with that, mister. You're your own trail boss now. You look fine, Gil. Same for you. How's it going? Oh, still got those San Antonio stock owners standing in line, just like the old days. <sighs> like the old days. How about a drink? Oh, I'm supposed to pick up my rambler. Well, he seems to have himself pretty well tied up. <laughs> Ever know of a ramrod who wasn't? <laughs> Come on, bartender. Two, make it your best. Wow. I can still remember your first time out. Lanky, wet behind the ears, a real salty kid. <laughs> and how about those three strays you lost? Just one day out of jump off. Now that I'd just soon forget. Oh, no, 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 this is on me. On one condition. You forget about those strays. <laughs> Ate you out, didn't I? Oh, and then some. Oh, good luck. Bad memory. You moving herd? Yeah, a couple miles east. We're heading for Wyoming. Oh, I just come back from up there myself. Huh? I trailed up a stock of herd, 1,800 head. Were well, you taking the long way back? Why not? There's no hurry. It's too late in the season to sign up another herd. I've got nothing but time on my hand. I know how that is. Yeah, men like you and me, we're uh, not much used to ourselves unless we're pushing beeves, are we? No, not much, I'm afraid. No, thanks. Say, Harry, I just thought of something. What? Would you be interested in uh, trailing herd up north? With my outfit. Of course, it would only be riding drag, but I need an extra hand. Really, you'd be doing me a favor. Well, if you put it that way, Gil, I, I don't see how I can refuse. Hey, boss. Come here. Hey, I, I want you to meet uh, Linda Lou here. Yeah. Say, uh, boss, I... Yeah, I know. You're in love again. No. Linda Lou, Rowdy Yates is Harry Maxton. How do you do? You'll be riding drag with us starting tomorrow. Hey, you got your gear with you? Back and waiting. Well, let's go. Linda? Harry Maxton. What's the matter, honey? Is something wrong? Thank you. 
Something wrong, Mr. Wishbone? Is ever anything right with you? You've done it again. Don't what, Mr. Wishbone? I asked for salt, didn't I? Yes, sir. And salt is spelled with an S. And pepper is spelled with a what? A P, I guess. A P, you guess. What does that say? P, Mr. Wishbone. So? Salt, see? Well, I handed you the wrong shaker so many times, Mr. Wishbone. I thought I'd change them around. That way there won't be so many mistakes. Just trying to be a good old helper. Well, you've helped enough. Now, go on and get out of here. Where? I don't care where. Just go and count to a hundred. Slow. Now get going. Yes, sir. One. Two. Three. Four. Hey, Wishbone. Mr. Favre, you can see I'm busy. I haven't got time. You remember this fella? Mr. Maxton, are you a sight for sore eyes? And you're a sight for an empty stomach. Well, now, there's a trail boss appreciates me. Now, you're going to stay for supper, and I won't take no for an answer. You're staying with us all the way to Denver, Wish. And that was Mr. Favor's idea. Delivered my herd early and was riding along, minding my own business, when who do I bump into? Yeah, I asked him to sign up with his wish. Well, you know, like I said to Roddy last night, how bad we need an extra hand? Yeah, we do. Fortunately, he was in between, had some time on his hands, so... Well, trust the boss to pick up a real bargain when he sees it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I gotta get back to my cooking. Oh, Harry, here's some of the boys. This is Harry Maxton. Some of you may know him. Clay Forrester, Jim Quince, Joe Scarlett, and Frank Slade. We don't need no introduction, do we, Mr. Maxton? It's been a real long time. Harry will be riding the rest of the way to Denver with us. He'll spell toothless on drag. Drag? <laughs> well, now, ain't that something? The great Harry Maxton eating dust. <laughs> well, it sure is a funny world. Come and get it! Well, the biscuits ain't done yet, Mr. Wishbone. They're done enough. Now, Mr. Maxson. Something wrong? No, I. I saw you rubbing your face with your hands. Yeah, some dust in my eyes. I got a hole in my stomach, it just won't quit. Right now, even your stew looks good. Mm. 
heat up your coffee, Mr. Maxton? Oh, darn it, we're wrong. Mr. Maxton. Special service for Mr. Maxton. Oh, why don't you dry up? What are you bucking for, Wishbone? You no know, trail boss anymore. He's just like the rest of us now. Wishbone, I'll try a little more of that coffee. One more minute, and all you would have gotten was an empty pot with a new dent in it. Mr. Maxton. So whatever happened to the famous Harry Maxton, uh, the trail boss with, with iron in his fists, granite in his guts. Get off my back. Leave him alone. He ain't causing no trouble. Not causing any trouble, man. Well, he sure didn't mind handing it off, did you, Mr. Maxton? Twenty days out in the plains and you gave me my time. You cut me loose with a quart of water, broken down cow pony, and <laughs> a handful of hard tack. Yeah, I had it coming. I let one stray get by me, one lousy stray. Now, I had it coming to me for that. All right, Maxton. You're down to dirt with the rest of us now. You got no crew to back you up, and you got no owners to make it stick. It's just you and me. Do you hear me, Maxton? It's just you. And me. That's enough. You men got a job to do, and that job ain't finished till we reach Denver. You got any problems, you can settle them then. All right, Maxton. I got time. Got all the time in the world. Who's that? Me, Mr. Maxton. Wishbone? Yeah, Mr. Maxton. What are you doing here? Well, I couldn't sleep either, so I just thought I'd join you. <laughs> My. times, Mr. Maxton. <laughs> like old times, Wish. Yeah. Oh, these young kids today, what do they know? Ah, oh, they're all right. Uh, they think they know everything. Just because they got a few years on us. They think they got the whole world in their hip pockets. Maybe they have. Maybe that's the uh, part of being on the short side of 30. The best part. Yeah, it... Puts me in mind of the first time I saw St. Louis back in 47. 
Oh, I tried to take over that town with loud talk and a thirst that just wouldn't quit. Must have taken the better part of a month for my head to shrink back to size. <laughs> Same thing happened to me in San Antonio. Spent a week in a local castle, but it was worth it. You know, I really believed I had Texas by the shorthorns. Boys will wear off their edge wish, just like we did. Oh, I gotta keep this hid away. I never can tell who'll get into my medical supplies. <laughs> medical supplies? Painkiller. Guaranteed to cure uh, snake bite, broken bones, and cold nights like this. I tell the boys it's cooking wine. All right, Wish. What is it? Oh, what's what? You're not passing around your cooking wine unless you want something special. Well, you just take care of yourself, Mr. Maxton. I mean, with that fellow Slade. Now, he's mighty fast with that gun, and, well, you, you're... Wish, what do you got to say? Well, your reputation can't whip him, Mr. Maxton. And that's just about all you got left, your reputation. So, just don't you mix with him, you hear? I hear. Drink on it? Drink on it. For now. But when we hit Denver, the drinks are on me, right? Right. get past you, Harry. Just a slip, I guess. Nobody should know better than you how much a few slips like that can cost you. Won't happen again, Gail. Won't happen again. Well, that does it, Yates. Ain't bad enough having Max done along now. Now he's got to be wet nursed. Now, you might put up with it, but I won't. Not for long. Straight, six eyes. Yeah. Well, four tens beats it. Oh. <clears throat> Those cards. Right. You feel kind of sorry for him, huh, Mr. Wishbone? Sorry? What in Hades are you talking about? I mean, that old man. Old? Well, Mr. Maxson isn't much older than I am. Are you calling me old? Oh, I didn't mean that, Mr. Wishbone. What I meant, he's kind of old just to be droving. Well, there you go using that word again. What makes you think a man isn't any use just because he's put on a few years? 
Well, a man don't hardly hit his stride till he's mellowed out some. You don't think I learned this job overnight, do you? No, oh, sir, it took time and plenty of it. And the same goes for Mr. Maxton. Doesn't anybody need to feel sorry for Mr. Maxton? No, oh, sir. Anyway, he's just doing this to do Mr. Favor a good turn. I heard that fellow Slade talking about him. Slade? Now, what's a saddle itch like Slade know about the likes of Harry Maxton? There isn't a better boss on this trail or any other trail. Yes, sir. Anytime you want to know anything about anything, you come to me. We'll go around listening to Jasper's like Slade. Sure thing. You hear me? Sure thing. All right. Now, here, what are you standing around gabbing for? Sort those apricots and put them on the fire. Oh, now, what's the matter with you guys? Is this a card game or a wake? Shut up and deal. Boy, well, what we need in this game is some new blood to liven it up. Hey, what about him? What's the matter with you, boy? Don't you know Mr. Maxton? He don't want to mix with plain drovers. But I was just asking... Useless. I... Yeah, I know. Deal the cards. Your bet. Deal me out of this one. Come on, sit in. Maybe we ought to have a little talk, huh? About Maxim? Ain't nothing to talk about. Things have been going real smooth up to now. Why ask for trouble? Ain't gonna be no trouble. Well, look, boss, it's a... It's the share money. The men ain't gonna want to split with no newcomer, especially one like Maxton. You tell them not to worry about their money. I'm taking care of Maxton's end. Well, all right, then. Forget, forget the money. It's uh, Maxton just spells trouble, that's all. Look at, look at the way the men are now. Look at Slade. He's got a chip on his shoulder as big as he is. Slade? That boy, he got a lot to learn. Well, ask anyone. Ask anyone who's worked for Maxton. Maxton knows this business. Being a trail boss ain't running no maypole dance. It's a job to do no matter what. Uh, sure, Maxton's on right. Sure, he's tough. More than that. And he's not the kind to give any quarter, but he never asked for none, either. I know. I worked for him. Well, that was a long time ago, though. He's the same man. He's not the same man. Last time out, he lost half his herd, and the time before that, uh, most of his men walked off on him. Every man in every cow town along this trail knows that Maxton's through. He's finished. He won't even touch him, and now when he comes begging to you, you take him on. He didn't beg. I asked him. Why? We don't need an extra man, not on drag or anywhere else. Maxton will hold up his end. It's a long day tomorrow. You better... I know. Better get some sleep. We detour 60 miles east. How far is the nearest water? Two days, I hope. Uh, bees ain't gonna be too happy. And don't give them time to think about it. Keep prodding those lead steers till sundown. Right. All right, Clay, go find that water at the end of the rainbow. Well, let's hope it's still there. Mr. Maxton, I didn't see it. It's too bad Favor wasn't here. 
Well, he could have helped you up. Old man. All right, Slade. Strap on your gun belt. Let's get this done. Christmas come early this year. Mr. Paxton, don't do it. Don't let him push you. It's not the boss. It's a broken down old cook. Won't belong before there's nobody left to hide behind. It's suicide. He isn't worth it. Neither is life. It has to be the way he says. Now stand back, Wish. You heard the man, now back off. Mr. Maxson, you... Wish! Back off. It has to be this way. All right, Slade. You always talk to fast gun. Let's see how fast. Right in the belt buckle. Well, that's where the first one's going. Gotta save the second one till I hear you begging. Loud and clear. Sounds like you, Slade. Big man when you're on the top. An empty bucket when you have to root and scratch. That's what's eating you, isn't it? I called you down in front of the men and showed them you had no bone in that back of yours. You ain't carrying around that load of hate because I fired you. But because I proved you're nothing at all. Just a little runny-nosed kid trying to bluff his way through a man's world. Draw, Axton. After you, Slade. Af after you. Well, break it up. Stay out of this favor. And I said break it up, boy. This ain't done yet. It isn't until this drive is over. Well, you got a choice. You keep that gun put away, or you get out of here right now. Well? It'll keep. Eastways for the time being. All right, bring it up, all of you. Wait a minute, Harry. Now, you know better. The Slade started it. Mr. Maxson Shut up. all he could. I don't care who started it. I want it finished now. Clear? Clear. Give everybody on strict water rations the next two days. You already told me. So I'm telling you again. All right. Oh, uh, Mr. Fayer, there's something you ought to know about Mr. Maxson. What? Well, he didn't start that ruckus with Slade. Uh... Hey. 
Harry, I can't let it ride anymore. Ride? I'm waiting for you to come to me, but I can't wait any longer. There's too much at stake. Oh, Gil. I didn't know what it was before. I know now. It's your eyes. They bothered me today. The dust, that's all. Harry. All right, so it's my eyes, but they're not so bad. And... Well, look, you get a little older, things change a little. Well, maybe I could use a pair of specs, but that doesn't How mean... How bad is it? I got a year, maybe two. But, Gil, I still got time. I could still be useful. It's a long, hard drive ahead. It's going to be tough enough for those who are able to handle it. I can still do a job. I got a responsibility to the crew as well as the owners. You know that better than anyone. Well, just let me stay on till we make Denver. Any job. Let me prove to you what I have to prove to myself. Remember, Radley, you got a son in St. Louis. It ain't no shame to it, Harry. Everybody needs help one way or another. Then you help me. Let's face it, we all come to the end of the trail sometime. Oh, I'm not fighting that, Gil. It's just that I can't go down like a bow-backed plow horse put to pasture or a, an old man with a crooked back and a hat full of memories that, that don't matter to anyone. Thirty years matters, Harry. It matters to a lot of people. It's what matters to me. Gil, I told you I can't quit now. I can still be useful. Harry, listen. No, you listen. Put yourself in my shoes. You just think how willing you would be to walk away from all this. The only real meaning to your life. You told me to be honest with you before. All right, Gil? Now you be honest with me and to yourself. All I'm asking is to let me ride out the rest of this drive. All right, Harry. Best I can do is let you work the remuda with Jesus. I won't let you down. Gil. Uh, uh, the others, do they have to know? I mean about the eyes. Hmm? Oh. Pity don't go down very easy. Oh, it isn't that I can't handle the remuda. Know what I mean, Gil? Yeah, I know what you mean. Two days, a quarter rations, unless we have a rain. 
Right, some chance. Quarter rations, then. Right. Well, at least we only lost five head in that poison water. That's lucky. Yeah, real lucky. Well, there's water here to the west, beyond uh, Eagle Pass. Yeah, well, our luck by the time we get there, it'd be dry out. No, no, it's spring fed, according to the mark. How far you figure from here? Mm, two days, if we push day and night. We'll never make it. Those bees will be dropping like flies. There's water nearer. To the east, a good stream. Where? The foot of Calvert Range. You start out for that stream and you'll reach it before sun or tomorrow. Yeah, well, uh, will you show me on this map where that uh, stream is, Max? I mean, please show me. It's not marked on the map, I guess. Oh, you guess. It's there. I covered every square foot of this country. You say. That's right, he says. He knows this country blindfolded. Calvert Rain. You sure? I'm telling you. Oh, now, listen, boss. We're you... driving east, then. Get him up. Start riding. I want to report on that stream as fast as possible. There is a stream. Keep them moving! Kick them, drag them if you have to, but keep them moving! I think you ought to quit until you tell Mr. Favor. Well, you just go right on thinking, because nothing's going to change my mind. What's going on here? He's quitting, Mr. Roddy. Quit? Well, we need every man we got. You know the fix we're in, Slade. You can't quit. Look, I, I told the others, and I'm telling you. Now, Favor's crazy for listening to Max, isn't it? That old man, he's leading his herd right up a blind alley. Look, Max, it might be a lot of things, but he's cattleman all the way. He ain't going to dry out a herd. That's what you say. But I know him. I say he's trying to kill every one of us, cows included. Well, I want no part of it. Yeah. Keep what I got coming. What you got coming, I couldn't keep. Maxim was right. You're yellow from the ground up. Hey, now look, Maybe I... you'd like to make me eat those words, huh? Maybe you'd like to draw that gun on me, show me what a big man you are? Just remember one thing, Slade. I ain't an old man. Come on, what are you waiting on? I want no part of it. I just want out. And get out. Now let's get going. We got a herd to keep moving. Not a sign of a stream. You searched the area good? I searched all of it. What do you think took me so long? Turn the herd in, keep them that way. You help me. Yeah. Fish. Where's Maxton? He's gone. He's gone. That's right. He said Clay was wrong. Wrong? That's right. He said he didn't go far enough. He took an empty canteen, went up there, said he's going to fill it with water from that stream. Well, Mr. Favor, he can't find his way up there, even with the best of eyes. Uh, tell Ronnie to hold the herd here until I get back.
Gil. I'm all right. I lost my horse. I've got him. Take it easy. We'll be riding back. Now, wait, wait, wait. Come on. Wait. Don't wait. Wait. <laughs> Where, Harry? You can see it, can't you? Yeah, Harry. I can see it all right. <laughs> it's there, like I said. Like you said, Harry. Good luck to you, Mr. Maxson. So long, fellas. Goodbye. So long, sir. So long. Bye. Well, Harry, you know you're still welcome to ride to Denver with us. It's going to be kind of hard to get a good man out here. I got an idea you're going to do fine, Rowdy. Real fine. No, Gil. I reached the end of the trail. I mean... I reached the end of this trail for me. I got what I wanted. It'll do. Where will you be heading, Mr. Maxton? Oh, first to Center City and then the stage to St. Louis. Been a long time since I've seen my son. You take care of yourself, Wishbone? Sure, Mr. Maxton. Rowdy? It's been like old times, Gil. Like old times, Harry. Somebody ought to go along with him, at least as far as Center City. Not with Harry Maxton. Now he'll make it the rest of the way, now that he knows where he's going. Yeah, well, yeah. that may be, but we might have some mail in Center City. I was thinking maybe I'd ride on in there. You know, I'm more worried about you getting lost. Well, I wouldn't get lost if I was riding along with Mr. Maxton, though. True. All right, get going. I'll, I'll get my horse. the reading. Slow, Mr. Faber. Very slow. I started learning late and it's hard to catch up. Yeah. Huh. Rowdy ain't back yet? No, sir, no sign of him. He should have been back by yesterday. I hope he finds water. Them steers have been living on their own sweat and that's a fact. 
Well, in my opinion, there sure ain't no country to be pushing cattle in. Now, when you come up with a fact about how to get around that country instead of an opinion, then I will listen you to a fairly well. Miss Boone, how's the water holding out? We got one full barrel and one half empty. Well, squeeze it. We're gonna need all the water we can. We got a lot of desert to go through first. All right, Mushy, bring me an iron. Tell him drink it while it's hot. Mr. Wishbone fixed this for you. Says it's prime for your Quincy. There ain't no liquor in it, Mr. Newton. My body is a temple. It ain't fit to contaminate a temple with hard liquor. Well, no, sir, it surely ain't. Well, what's in it? Mr. Wishbone said it ain't nothing but pepper tea. Pepper tea, huh? You tell Mr. Wishbone I'm mighty grateful. How far are you in that book, Mr. Newton? As far as the bee gats. There's a sight of bee gats to get through, mushy. A mortal sight of bee gats. Well, they take it. That guy told me ain't no liquor, huh? There's a man that's drunk enough whiskey to fill the Rio Grande and stole enough cattle to fill all of Texas. And when it comes to just plain ordinary sinning and general hell raising, Jeb Newton's name belongs right at the top. Now he's gone and got himself salvation and won't take a little potion for the sake of his body for fear it'll put a spot on his soul. Tell you, boy, there's nothing worse nor more unreasonable than a retired sinner. So who do you Be quiet. Mr. Wishbone? That ain't no real owl, Mr. Faber. That's a fire. Come on, Mr. Favor, those moccasins, they're Cheyenne, all right, but uh, she don't look Cheyenne to me. Could be a slave. No, I don't think so. Well, you see, it's that paint. They use that for ceremonial burnings, and there ain't a savage kicking that would paint a slave. Oh, she's a witch. That's why they wanted to burn her. <laughs> Mr. Favor, get rid of her turnaround. She'd just bring evil on all of us. Don't matter what she brings. Leastways, not now. Look at that. She's no more Indian than I am. I was an owl. Lived in an oak. Whiskey, whiskey, weedle. The only words he ever spoke. Fiddle, faddle, beetle. I a chance to pass that way. Whiskey, whiskey, weedle. And said, I'll shoot you, stupid bird. Fiddle. Faddle. Beetle. Uh, 
That's hot enough. Pour it in the basin and take it in there. You can come on now. You get out of there. Oh, yes, sir. It, uh, it's soap to wash yourself. Well, you just take your time and it'll come to you. Brushed off your dress as good as I could. Now, where you been? I've been looking for you since yesterday. Scouting. You're the one who sent me. Oh, I uh, ran to a band of dog soldiers headed to swing west. Any trouble? No, no trouble. I just wasn't looking for any, that's all. Well, what did you find? Oh, at the end of the rainbow. Good grazing water just a few days north of here. Hey, you keep that up. You know, I'm going to give you a raise. What's that? A raise. Oh, you mean that? Well, that's Wishbone's bathhouse for straight females, I guess. White woman Female. we come across last night, yeah, she'd been delirious, still in a state of shock. Seems like she escaped from the Cheyenne. Okay, coming up. Tell me what that's all about. Beats me. Been like that since we found her. Boss. Hmm? Uh-uh. Diane. They the ones you saw? Yeah, looks like them. They want a party. Tell them to come on in. see that she is not of the Cheyenne nation. She belongs with us. It is you who cannot see. She is Michi Manito. Look in her eyes. She has witch's eyes. Mm, she has fooled you like she fooled us. When we found her, we thought spirits protected her. That was why we did not kill her then. Where did you find her? That way. Four days towards sun. Uh, who was with her? She was alone. We take her along with us. We give her food. We keep her in our lodges. But things happen. Buffalo went away. People were hungry. Much sickness. People die. Other things happen. We hold counsel. Talk much. Say this woman witch must die. That lord. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll take the woman with us. We will take her far away from the Cheyenne. 
and she will not bother them anymore. There is only one way to destroy the evil spirit that this woman brings among us. She must die. An evil in her will die also. But if there is no evil spirit, what if this Michi Manitou is only a sickness, easily cured? No cure, Michi Manitou, only death. Give her to me. She stays with us. Then we will take her! That running horse, he don't bluff none. He said he's gonna take that woman. He'll take her. Even if he has to take us. Well, that's his problem, then. The army can settle it when we get to Bent Fort. Where's Boone? She'll ride with you. The rest of you get out of the herd and keep it tight. And no shooting unless you absolutely have to. Let's get rolling. Looks like half the Cheyenne Nation will be visiting us before this is over with. How far ahead is that water, Roddy? We'll make it by tomorrow night. Yeah, them Cheyenne lettuce. favor mm -hmm. I was just thinking there are 25 men on this drive 25 men yeah so well, uh, I was wondering is one woman worth 25 men You'd better get some sleep new no, I need no answer I'll tell you straight that witch is gonna cost us Witch? Look now. Banshees, goblins, and witches belong in fairy stories. Well, the ashes are some Salem cookout. Now, the Cheyenne don't know no better, but you do. At least ways you're supposed to. It says right here in this book that hell sends out its imps in many disguises to bring about the damnation of man. And as far as I'm concerned, imps and witches are the same thing. Servants of Lucifer. Right, calm down. Now look, use what little good sense you've got. Do you really think the devil is going to be that concerned? Is he going to waste that much time on a cattle drive? The drovers are known as pretty good sinners all by themselves without any help. And I swear, last time I looked around, I didn't see one little old halo. Well, that's because they don't work on their salvation like I do. Please, Mr. Favor, don't let him get me till I finish the book and earn my salvation. Now, you ain't gonna get your salvation by bringing back the Dark Ages. Now, get this straight. That girl is not a witch. She is sick, and she is gonna stay with us, leastways until we can get her to a doctor. Now, if you don't like that, you can get her on your horse and you can ride out of here right now. Is that plain enough? How far do you think I can get by myself? It ain't me that's gonna go. No, sir. Not me.
many you figure are out there now? Uh, there's 20 that I can see. That means there must be twice that many hidden in gopher holes and around. And there are 25 of us. Worried? Man's only got a certain number of years to live. I don't feel like hurrying up the dying. Everybody's gonna die sometime. Seems to me you've had your share of years. I can't afford to die. Not yet. There's too much sinning to make up for. Way too much. It was an accident, Jason. You have to believe that. You shouldn't have left me alone. I was frightened. I didn't mean to kill you. I couldn't hurt you. You haven't hurt me. Sure you're not just having a bad dream? Dream? That's what it is. I was dreaming. It was all a dream. But this isn't a dream. It's now. It's real. Maybe you better get some sleep, don't you think? No. I never want to sleep again. I'm awake now. The dream is over. You're not dead at all. You're right here. With me, Jason, where you belong. It's Abby, Jason. You're Abby. Abby? Huh? Where is Jason, Abby? Right here with me. Where he'll always be. Not Jason. For better or worse. You mustn't go out. Don't listen to the owl. The owl? It's only an owl, Jason. Nothing but an owl. You mustn't go out. Not by the ten trees. Please, stay with me. No, don't go, don't go. I won't let you go. What's that? Not again. Not again. It's starting all over again. We'll see if you can't do something for her. I'll give her a dose of laudanum as best I can do. All right, come along. Everything will be all right. You just come with wishbone. She woke me up and kept calling me Jason. Said she had a dream that I was dead. She told me her name was Abby. And mentioned that I shouldn't go out when I heard an owl hoot. Something about the ten tree. That's... It's an owl. That's what always seems to tip her off. You go ahead and swallow this. It'll make you feel better. Abby. Or Abby, aren't you? No. No, Abby died with Jason. They died together under the ten trees. What about the owl? 
How come you're so afraid of an owl? There was an owl. Lived in an oak. Whiskey, whiskey, wheedle. And all the words he ever spoke were fiddle, paddle, fiddle. They got pickets out all around us. I go in there, stepped on a couple before I got back. How far did you go? Well, clear up their main camp. There's 50 or 60 of them up there, and there's more coming in, too. And, well, I, I sure hate to say it, but I don't think we're going to push that herd much further. But we will push it. Yeah, but it it might be easier if we had a little help. You know, I could get to Ben's Fort and be back here by sundown tomorrow. We'd be in heaven by sundown tomorrow, too. Oh, not with that dead horse of mine. Well, there ain't a shy on pony around here. You can outrun him and... Besides, Miss Faber, it might be our only chance. I'm afraid you get a point. You'll have to be riding full out when you hit those flats and get to the ridges. After you hit the high ground, stay down in the draws till you get clear. I'll do it. And Jim. It's no strain, Mr. Faber. I always did have a little grease pig in me. Look for me night after next. Might be wearing a blue coat for you. too easy, though. Afraid they know something we don't. Whatever it is, it's all bad news for us. He's been waiting for us. Didn't even want to risk hitting us out in the open. It's doubled ahead and picked their own spot where they could really nail us. Looks like the end of the line. Yeah. I'll bet him.
no fire. It's Quince. I guess I just run out of grease, boss. There, there's more than a hundred dog soldiers up there. And running a horse so as to give him the woman by sunup. Or by sundown tomorrow. He's, he says his dogs will be feeding on us. Right back in the stations. Can't let us die for an Indian witch. I ain't gonna die. No, sir, not yet. Mashi, hurry up with that hot water. Come here, Miss Wishbone. Now go get me that pot of axle grease. Best thing in the world for his back. Right away. Jezebel out of your heart. It's the only way you can save yourself. The only way you can save all of us. Now you do like I say. You hear? Do just like I say. No better. I'd say the Cheyenne pulled out completely. You check the herd? No, well, I check with the Nighthawks. They haven't seen any signs. Mr. Faber, the girl, she's gone. She's what? I told her sit quiet in the wagon while I fixed up Quince, and when I got back, she was gone, just like the night it swallowed her up. Senores, Senor Newton, he's gone, and two horses were taken from the picket line. Newton? He said he wasn't ready to die yet. You don't suppose he's taken that little girl back to those savages? I'm afraid that's it. That's the reason the Cheyenne pulled out. They got what they come for. Over consumption and the burning age to consume the ages and cause sorrow of the heart. Death is upon me. I don't see the light. I look, but I don't see the light. There's nothing more to do with slate. There is no salvation. Newton, what happened? They lynched me. I took them, the woman. Told them she was asked to burn. I, I thought they'd let me be. And they lynched me like I was a dog sick with their evil spirit. They lynched me. I did it for you, Mr. Favor. For all of you. Don't you see? Young. 
I was only trying to get saved. And I, I missed out I'd done right. And that's the worst sin of all. She won't feel much. It's the best thing for her. You hear me, girl? It's the best thing. Oh, please don't let it hurt. It's the best thing. It's the best thing. Kiss her. Poor old man. He never did get through them baguettes. It's all over. I'm going to be done. Go after the girl. There is no chance. Can't you realize it'd take a whole regiment to bring her back? Look, I still say we can... I say it's done. That's final. Why don't you get a shovel, spade Newton in? Wishbone, break camp. Get ready to get rolling. The rest of you get out to the herd. We're moving out right now. Didn't you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. Jesus. I may be gone for a little while. You settle up my horse. But you told us... Yeah, well, there just might be an outside chance for one man. Well, it's no more idiotic than the whole bunch gone and be the same chances. But look, you make sure my orders stand whether I get back or not. Comprende? Nice day for a ride. Me? I just had to get away from the smell of cooking for a while. Uh, you see, uh, Quince and Scarlett got them all stretched out. They're running nice and easy. Now, Mr. Ferry, you know very well that I'm the only one who can handle that girl. And Rowdy, well, well I, what he's trying to tell you is that we're going to go along with you. And there's not really too much you can do about it now. Yeah, you can just make the best of it. Uh, you coming? Dancing and hollering and celebrating. My guess would be daylight before we start burning. What about the woman? She's right in the middle of them. I suppose when they get celebrating real good, I might be able to sneak around them. Wait, running horse. Wait. Burn me first. Look. Look, it, it doesn't matter to you. But I must die before the woman. Don't you understand? Don't you realize what will happen when you kill her? The evil spirit will, will come out of her. 
it will come out of her in the smoke of the burning fire. And that smoke will fall on, on everyone around. That smoke will fall on me, and the, the evil spirit will get into me. Please, running horse, please. You say many things. Some things may be true, other things may be lies. Can evil spirit be driven from woman by a white man's medicine? I can try, running horse. But the woman will have to be taken back to where the spirit took her, where you found her. I will take you there. If you do not drive evil spirit from white woman, there will be no more talk. Only fire. No more talk. Only fire. Just what do you hope to gain by all this? Yeah, what happens when we reach this place? Uh, some evil spirits or whatever it is. I don't know, Roddy. I just don't know. Sitting on the rocks of dead. You to the sun once more. Then I send braves. This is the place. Who's buried right there, Abby? Go too far, Jason. The owl mustn't go too far. Mighty heavy caliber made that. At least a fifty. Ronnie, bring her along inside. Me Jason. Abigail and Jason Bartlett, June 10th, 1865. Gabby, you know these people, don't you? Jason and Abigail. Jason is dead. But Abigail isn't, right? Shh. Jason. Let the clock stop. The clock should never stop. Jason. 
Why mustn't it strike, Abby? It's when the owl hoots. Jason comes. Poor Jason. Cock strikes, owl hoots. Jason comes. A hunter chance to pass this way. I said I'd shoot you. Stu Boss, it makes sense. scared, and Jason was out hunting, wasn't he? Jason. Yeah, he'd, he'd left you alone. You remember? No. Jason would never leave me alone. Not in the dark. And then you heard the owl. It was night. And you heard the owl, didn't you? Jason. And then the clock struck. It's late at night. You're frightened. Then you hear the owl, and then the clock strikes. No. Abby, Abby, what happened? Jason's gone. It's dark. The clock kept striking and striking. Then I heard the owl. to pass this way. They're coming. It's dark, and Jason's gone, and they're coming. The rifle. Where's the rifle? It's all right now. I killed him. I killed him. Just put it out of your mind. It's all over. Who are you? Friends. We just happened by, Mrs. Bartlett. I can't remember. You've been a little sick. What did happen? There was a report of Indians. Jason was afraid they'd run off the stock. So he went out to gather the cattle and hide them. He didn't come home. And I got frightened. I hadn't been out here very long. I guess I started hearing things. But I thought they were real. And I think I fell asleep. I woke up. The cabin was dark. The clock was striking. Then I heard an owl. I remember Jason telling me about Indian signals. Steps. I remember 
firing the gun. And I saw who it was. Stood there. His eyes looking so surprised. I started to scream his name and I tried. But it wasn't any use. I loved my husband very much and I... I wanted to die with him. Right there. Maybe that's just sort of what you did, Mrs. Bartlett. You died for a little while. <laughs> Roddy, you might as well go get those Cheyenne and tell them there's nothing to be afraid of now. That evil spirit is buried. Wishbone will see you into Ben's fort. The army will provide transport to your home. Thank you for everything. Bye, Mr. Faber. Miss Bartlett. I'm grateful to all of you. Think you're done, Danny? You're letting them bees drift. I get them. I get them. Well, come on. <laughs> what do they think they're doing? It looks like a bunch cut out on them. 
Must have been riding with their heads tucked under their arms. You put somebody else on flank. Tell them I want to talk to them. I don't know. We're spread out pretty thin now, Mr. Favor. Anybody would make a little mistake. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one size of mistake. Big. Yes. She stopped fiddling around. We're late getting started. Well, hurry as fast as I can. There's about a cup left, still warm. What's holding you up? Nothing. You should have been rolling 15 minutes ago. Mr. Favor, have those men ever come in and found me not all set and ready? Always the first time. Well, don't you hold your breath till it happens. What's the matter with you? Did you get up on the wrong side of your sack this morning? Yeah, I guess. Well, now, what about that cup of coffee? What you so head up about? We've been through this before. That doesn't make it any easier. Half a dozen men short, at this size, like picking your teeth with a 45. Those fellas that cut out weren't pulling their part of the load anyway. So now everybody else has to pull double. It's beginning to tell, men are getting tired, edgy. They can just rest when we get to Mission Valley. Yeah, if those new men I telegraphed for are waiting for us. How much longer do we get there? A couple days under the week. Later, storm. Hold it, Wishbone. Save one for me. What do you mean, hold it? You get it when the getting's good, or you don't get it at all. I think I'm doing running a short order house here. Temper, temper, temper. Well, who's mad? You are. Why did you roll out of your bedroll wrong side this morning? Hush in! Yes, sir. <laughs> Prince uh, said you want to see me. Yeah, but up forward with the Scott usually is. Well, he's supposed to be out looking for trouble, too. Oh, what now? Well, I spotted somebody yesterday. He looked like he was following the herd. And, well, you know, I found his campfire this morning up there on the ridge. Stuck pretty close. Yeah, close enough to come in and have supper with us. And, uh, unless he had a reason not to. As if we didn't have enough to worry about. All right, pass the word. Have the men watch out for him. Just what I had in mind. Everything all right, Mr. Caballo, senor? Oh, uh, swell. Mr. Favor? Oh, I already have. Why, those beefs cut out. Huh? That's nothing to worry about, Mr. Favor. We got them all back. Why was it even necessary to get them back? It's just one of those things that happens all the time. Well, not on any drive, I boys. It only happens once. Make myself clear? Well, yes. Well, maybe because you're new with the outfit, you expect some special treatment, huh? No, no. Good, then you won't be disappointed. All right, you two will take over a drag. Drag? Oh, now, wait Whatever you say, Mr. Favor. Come on, Danny. Oh, Joe, just a minute. Now, you knew better. That wasn't even your station. Well, uh, no, but I, uh... Well, uh you're not exactly the picture of a guardian angel. Well, he didn't mean no wrong, Mr. Favor. He's a nice kid. I hope that makes the dust a little easier to take. Mr. Favor! That's him. Sure it's the same man? I don't know about my money on it. All right, let's go. You need any help, boss? Oh, you're still riding track.
Uh, disappeared in a hurry. He probably saw us coming. <laughs> Afraid we'd waste too much time trying to find him now. I'd sure like to know what he's up to. Well, he follows us and then disappears when he sees us coming. Figures he sure ain't up to any good. Scarlet and Drake? Uh, Joe's good as asked for it. And Clayton can use a little dust to settle him down. Yeah, but Scarlet covers more flank than just about anybody else around. And Clayton's the type who maybe might quit if it gets too rough on him. Uh, we can do without him. Sure hand already, though. I'd rather have ten drovers and another job and do it right than an army of Danny Clayton's. Well, that ain't that bad. But... Later, Roddy. We've got something more important to worry about now. I got a gal nine feet tall. I got a gal that ain't all. Sleeps in the kitchen with her feet in the hall. Skip to my loo, my darling. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hi, boss. Been all right, bro? Oh, it's quiet enough around here, all right. But uh, seems to me this fella Royce has kind of got you spooked a little. Well, as long as it's me, ain't the herd. Keep your eyes open. Skip, skip, skip to my room. 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 I could ride this watch in a rocking chair. Like you did this morning? I'm sorry about that, Mr. Favor. Won't happen again, I promise. Any luck? Well, if he's hiding out there, he's doing it under a rock. We'll just have to wait for him to make his play. You're not gonna keep a double watch all night. You've got a choice. Either no sleep or no hurt. Stay out of that rocking chair, boy. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Favor. A couple dozen head, though. Bad enough. I could take a few minutes and go after it. I uh, leave it's too short. We we'll just have to write him off. Why don't we go after that trigger happy friend of ours? Because we can't spare the man. And I can't figure is why he shot at Clayton. What did that prove? Well, it spooked the herd, didn't it? For what? For two dozen head? If he could round him up. Hey, uh, are those ours down there? strays, don't they? Yeah, I found them back there a ways. They're scattered all over the brush. What happened? You heard spook last night? You wouldn't know nothing about that, I suppose. Not a thing. <laughs> well, the way you've been watching us, you ought to be up on just about everything. Not last night. Camped on the flat last night. 
But you have been following us. Oh, sure, for a couple of days. Why? I'm kind of choosy about the company I keep. It's an old habit of mine. Not about to draw on an inside straight until I try on the dealer's coat. See, the way I figured, man would be a fool not to get the lay of land before he tried to move in. Move in? Well, yeah. I'm looking for a job. Gonna put me on? Come on. get a layover in my life. And if those replacements only show up, so I can relax and enjoy it. What about him? Oh, Royce, what about him? Oh, what? come on, Clay. You're gonna get rid of him, aren't you? He's doing a good job. What for? I thought that was all settled. All right, you're the trail boss. You can hire anybody you want. He explained why he was following us. It wasn't unreasonable. He didn't explain why he tried to bushwhack Danny. Denied that. You think he'd brag about it? Look, outside of that, that's all you got against him, except for following us for a day or two. On the other hand, he picked up most of those strays. Saved us a lot of time, money, and trouble. So you figure you owe him something, I suppose. I owe him my thanks, at least. And you know how short-handed we were. I'm sure. But it's a great way to tie in with the outfit. <laughs> Get in good and wait for a chance to pull something bigger. It's possible. Matter of fact, I remember somebody else trying that once. You. All right, all right. Maybe I got nothing on him, but... Well, I'll bet you my last Iron Man he isn't joining this crew just for the job. As long as he does it, I got no complaints. country. Reminds me of back home. You ever been around Cimarron? Nope. Look, don't you belong back there on the flank someplace? Yeah. You know, I was in a job like this a couple of years ago up near Cimarron. You ever worked the Cimarron Trail? I'll take over here. Rowdy wants more men at drag. Why me? Everybody in this outfit eats his share of dust. My share, but no more. Don't do us any favors. I won't. Ah, uh, Clayton. You shoot any rabbits lately? Or did you just want the herd to have a little exercise? How did you know about that? Well, the moon kept me awake last night. Couldn't shut my eyes. How about your mouth? There's only three things in this world that's real quiet. Falling snow, the hour just before dawn, and the mouth of a man just dead. you showed up. Well, I can't say I was itching to come. Well, I figured this was just the spot for you, being as you're so good at rounding up strays. Keep moving, and while I'm in the valley, it's settled by sundown. You want me to kiss him goodnight, too? You can if you'd like. Well, everything's running smooth. I think we'll make it by sundown. It's amazing how efficient a crew gets once they smell a night on the town. Yeah, most of them, that is. What's that mean? Royce. Oh, you too? 
something. What's your headache? Well, I ain't got no headache. It's just that he ain't going out of his way to be exactly friendly. You want a friend, you join a social club. Now get him bedded down. <laughs> Favor. The sheriff wants to see you. Sheriff? See, from the town Cactus Wales. He's at the chuck wagon. Oh, Lord. What, what kind of a law you suppose we broke now? Well, it's probably just the usual welcome extended to all drovers. Get out of my town. Yeah. Nah, nothing like that, Mr. Favor. We don't mind drovers one bit. Why, if it wasn't for you boys, hardly nobody would come to Cactus Wells. Besides, Saloons can use the business. Well, those are sure the places that'll get it. Anything special on you, my sheriff? Yep. I'm looking for any one of these gents. Outlaws, all of them. Outlaws? Why come to us? Well, got me a system, Mr. Favor. A man riding alone is more liable to attract attention than a man riding with a crowd. Makes sense? Well, it's a system, all right. It looks like it works, too. Oh, what's that? Simon Royce. You know him? Seen him? He's one of my drovers. Where is he? Go get him. No arguments, Mr. Favor. I'm the man he's looking for. Better come along with me, Rice. Well, until you've read these, Sheriff. What's all this? Well, that's an affidavit from the judge. It tells all about the trial and my acquittal. Acquittal. Read what it says. Well, as far as I can see, anybody could have written this. Yes, sir, but not anybody would print up a newspaper, and that's why out of the Tulsa Weekly tells the story of the whole trial. I always carry these with me, Mr. Favor, otherwise I get picked up once a week. Well, we've got to get this thing straightened out. It seems plain enough to me, Sheriff. Your fly is a little out of date. Maybe, but I'd better check with Tulsa just to make sure. You do that. He ain't going nowhere. I'll take those, you don't mind. Well, if that's all, Mr. Faber, I'll get back on the job. Go ahead. Anything else on your mind, Sheriff? I guess not. Seems to me you ain't too particular about your crew, him being an ex-convict and all. Man, pedigree is his business, not mine. Up to you. See you boys back in town. Clay. Yeah. Since I was better down, you and Roddy take out the night off. Then uh, the rest of the crew take off. When do you expect the new hands? Should be here now. You go into town with Roddy tonight, see if they're waiting around there. What's the matter? Ain't nobody got nothing to do? Uh. We just wondered, Mr. Favor, when those new drovers show up, you still figuring to keep Ross on? What? Might be somebody's got some objections? Might be. What for? Because he's an ex-convict? Uh, no, not that so much. What then? Well, uh, there, there's just something funny about him. The way he keeps watching all of us, like he's looking for somebody. Say it straight out, Joe. He just plain sticks in our craw. That's the way it is, boss. He don't get on with us, and we don't get on with him. Since when in the ever-loving world was you ever paid to like each other? Iron ain't a community project. It's my decision. He does his job, he stays. Any more objections? Good, then we can consider this little meeting adjourned and get back to work. Just surprised you didn't put your two cents worth in. The boy said it just fine. And my bet still goes. Double.
guess those bees are just as glad to settle down as we are. You're not worried, are you, Mr. Faber? Ah, no, as you say, you're a little curious. I didn't kill my wife, Mr. Faber. I'd come out in the trial. She killed herself. It's rough. Yeah, it must take a lot to turn a gun on yourself. You either got to be very brave or awful scared. Sick, maybe? Maybe. Anyhow, I figure she made up her mind before I caught up with her. Caught up? When you read what it said on that flyer, I was sent up on a manslaughter charge. Helen Mead only been married a little less than a year. Sent me away for seven years. Well, when I got back, she was gone. Ran off with another man. Uh, I can't blame her, though. They say he was a lot younger than me. After all, being alone for seven years, I guess she just couldn't wait it out. Many men would be that generous. Well, it's better than believing that she just didn't want me no more. Well, after a couple of months, I, I caught up with her. She'd even changed her name. She was in Tulsa, alone. She'd gotten about as low as a woman can get. It's been a rough meeting for both of you. No, it was worse for her. I wanted to forget all about it and start all over again. She wouldn't have no part of that. She just put me out. The last time I ever saw her, I guess she shot herself right after I left. How come they accused you of killing her then? Man with a record, that just comes natural. It took him a couple of weeks to catch up with me, and that was the first I heard of it. Of course, I straightened all that out in the trial. Since then? I've been looking. Looking? Looking for the man who left her. So Clay was right. You didn't join the outfit just for the job after all. He's a drover. After he left Tulsa, he drifted west to Texas. He'd join up with a herd on the Goodnight Loving Trail. That'd be your outfit, Mr. Favor. No, who he is? I don't know his name. I don't even know what he looks like. But if he's here, I'll find him. That is, if you're still here. Here? Out there? Someplace? I'll just be hanging around like before. You can't stop me, Mr. Favor. My wife's dead. And somebody in this outfit's going to answer for it. Time for seconds. Come along, move along, move along. Got to get the rest of the fellas in here. Let's go. All right, what is this? All of a sudden, you expect me to wait on you? <laughs> you don't think for one minute we're going to settle for that and we get a good meal in town, do you? Good meal? Well, when you get Tomaine, don't come to me for help. Well, at least it'll be better tasting Tomaine than what you dish out. You going to town, Quince? Don't it, I'm sorry. Best you keep your eyes open instead of your big mouth. Yeah, well, how about keeping those big things out of the way, then? You through that? What brand of pole can't they squeeze that out of? That's the most expensive lotion you've ever seen. Two dollars a bottle. Come all the way from Paris, France. Oh, and it's on steam, too. Well, you gotta use something strong. Drown out the smell of that herd. Me, I'll take cow. I never would have guessed. Hey, 
Fix your plate, Mr. Clayton? No, thanks. Not tonight, Mushy. If the new men ain't there yet, you send a telegraph to Paul Freeman at this address. Ask him what's holding them up. Gotcha. I'm ready when you are, Roddy. Hey, that's what I call a real big city drover. Oh, that be you decked out for. Cactus Wells ain't no El Paso boy. Females is females, no matter where they hang their hey, hat. Hey, a lady killer. Yeah, even smells kind of fancy. Probably scare up more flies than women. Roddy, if you play your cards right, I may even cut you in. Oh, looks like you've got some competition for a change, Roddy. Yeah, well, I might not uh, smell so fancy, boy, but experience, you know. Experience? Roddy, you're looking at the granddaddy casting over the whole Southwest. I'll bet you I've kissed more girls than you've ever seen. He talks a heck of a game, doesn't he? Not only talk. Someday I'll show you my little dress book. There ain't a town kicking that hasn't got some girl just waiting for Danny Clayton to come back. Hey, you've really been around, haven't you? Yeah? I, uh, don't suppose you've ever been down Oklahoma way, have you? Oklahoma? Sure. Even hit Missouri, Arkansas. I've been all over. Cimarron Trail, Tulsa? Yeah. Look, Ruddy, you and uh, Danny better get rolling, huh? No, no hurry. You ever come across a girl named Helen? Helen? Oh, I suppose so. I mean, Sally, Mary, Helen. <laughs> I get them kind of mixed up. Look, uh, Grace, you, you should be going out night hawking now, huh? I got the time, Mr. Favor. Helen Rogers, she called herself. She was uh, kind of small, real pretty, had brown hair. Rogers. Helen Rogers. Helen Rogers, yeah. Oh, I remember her now. You know her too, do you? Yeah, Clayton. I know her too. What's going on? Well, he was gunning for me. You're going into town, get going. I can't figure it. What do you want to gun me for? Uh, he was just looking to gun anybody, Danny. One thing for sure, he probably won't be with this outfit any longer. Let's go. Yeah, you couldn't have been any faster if you'd known he was going to do that. I knew. I'll talk to him alone. <sighs> you think you found him, huh? Uh, you heard. I heard a kid blowing his own horn. Everything he said adds up. To what? Another manslaughter charge? Is that all you need to kill a man? What kind of excuse did he have for killing my wife? He didn't. Come on, face it, Royce. She shot herself. On account of what he did to her, it's the same thing. You still don't know Clayton's your man. <sighs> you kill him, you'll never be sure. I'm sure. What about the next loudmouth punk that comes along? And the one after him? Well, it'll never end, Royce. You'll have to kill them all. Royce? Think I can cover the whole end of the valley myself? You're supposed to be on watch too, ain't you? All right, Mr. Favor, it'll keep for the time being. Well, are you coming? It's my fault. I ain't held him up. All right, go on. And nothing you'll be needing it for. You mind doing a little extra work for me tonight? Well, of course not, Mr. Favor. I'll need another Nighthawk. Nighthawk? Yeah, I wouldn't bother you, except uh, we're a little bit short. Well, that's all right. Glad to help. What? Uh, any special place, Mr. Favor? Yeah, the south side, near Royce. All right. And uh, you keep a sharp eye on him, huh? Now, if he leaves his post, you tell Kilroy to follow him, and you come back and tell me, all right? Well, sure thing, Mr. Favor. Uh, uh, thank you. I'll do my dog goodness. Mm. Nice quiet evening, huh, Mr. Royce? Oh, hi, Mushy. 
You lonesome or you're just scared of the dark? Gee, I don't know what you mean, Mr. Royce. I'm just trying to do a good job like Mr. Favor wants. Oh, well, that's fine, Mushy. You just do a good job. Company. Well, now I'll have a little bit of both since they're both so fine. Myself, when I can't sleep, I get out my letters book. That way, instead of counting sheep, I just end up counting. Well, do you want to talk about it or do you want to try to run that grizzly down yourself? Hmm? Royce. Grizzly? Roy's more like a bar of soap on Saturday night. Not much to hang on to. <laughs> you hung on to him all right, right in the belly. I had to. He meant it. Yeah, he was gone for Danny. Why? He's got his reasons, or at least he thinks he does. Point is, I knew about it this afternoon. Oh, not that he was gunning for Danny, but somebody in the outfit. Well, why don't you just get rid of him right then? It wouldn't have done any good. He had just hung close to the herd anyway. By letting him stay on, I could keep an eye on him. Maybe even find out who he is after before he found out himself. Well, that makes sense. Not much the way it turned out. I'm worse off than I was before. If I let him go now, he'll just pick Danny off from ambush somewhere along the line. Can't let him stay on, neither. I'd have to ride herd on him 24 hours a day. Well, how about telling the sheriff? Ain't no law against threatening, just doing. Well, Mr. Favor being a trail boss is one thing, but blowing Gabriel's horn and trying to grow wings at the same time is something entirely different. Huh? Well, why don't you just tell Clayton about Royce, the whole story, then back off and let them fight it out. It isn't any of your business. They're working for me. It's my business. Not when it comes to a killing. Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor! Come on, he's caught! Mr. Royce, you let out! You sent somebody after him? Well, that's just it. I didn't even see him go. What? Well, one minute he was there and the next he... How long ago? Maybe a half hour, maybe a little more. Well, what took you so long to tell us? Well, I tried to find him. I, I couldn't believe it at first. I looked everywhere. The Nighthawk. I'm well, sorry. I'm real sorry, Mr. Paper. Look, if Roddy gets back before I do, tell him I went into town. Tell him why. Hey, look. We got work to do. I'm all out of water. All right, Mr. Wishful. Now, come on. This isn't your fault. Yes, it is, Mr. Wishful. I didn't do what I was supposed to. Mr. Royce got loose on account of me. Now, we don't know he did it. Could have been an accident. Well, you don't believe that, Mr. Wishful. Nobody does. Well, just stop blaming yourself. Now, go on. Give me some water. It's all finished. We dug about 50 yards back there. Good. All we have to do is wait for Mr. Favor. And I still can't figure it out. Last we saw Danny, he was walking out of the saloon with the prettiest looking redhead you ever seen. When was that? 
Well, that was earlier. Uh, we waited around for him. And figured he heard the redheads coming. He said, ours. Was he drinking much? Well, more than everybody else. I don't know about later, though. No, I wish this, uh... This wasn't no accident. I didn't say it was. Coffee left with you. Yeah, plenty. Did you see the sheriff? Yeah, he's formed up with Clark's agent. Time they get moving, Royce could be in New Mexico. Seen Clay? Nope. Afraid there's not much hope there either. Royce just had too much of a head start. On your mind? Yeah, Wishbone says you knew what Royce was gonna do all along. To a point. You kept him on? Well, I'm sure Wishbone filled you in on the rest of it. Yeah, all except about you sending Mushy to keep an eye on him. Yeah. I'm afraid that might have been a mistake. Yeah, and you know what you always say about making mistakes. Yeah. I remember. Why don't you lay off? Can't you see he feels bad enough already? Well, Danny Clayton can't feel a thing. Senor Favor, Senor Clay and the others are coming back. I think they have Royce. What's going to happen, Mr. Wishbone? Well, we'll turn Royce over to the sheriff. But then what? Well, the law takes over. They'll give him a trial and decide whether or not he's guilty. Well, we know he did it. Maybe. The law's got to say so. Flats as far as you've gone lame. Well, Royce? What do you want me to do, start crying about it? I couldn't be happy unless I killed him myself. You must be feeling real fine then. When I kill a man, I do it to his face. You left the herd last night. You waited for Danny in the road from town, you bushwhacked him, then you tried to make it look like an accident. I'd save it for the sheriff, Clay. No, sir, he's gonna tell it to us. The trail drive's got its own laws. There's no reason why we can't try him. Yeah, if it's herd business, this is murder. We got that right, too. Not as long as the law's around to take care of it. Looks like you got a full-blown mutiny on your hands. Could be worse than that. They go through with it, each and every one could be up for murder. Well, if I know Rowdy and Clay, they'll go through with it. They do. They better figure on digging two graves. One for Royce, the other for me. Now listen to me, all of you. Now look, Mr. Listen! Now this ain't a trial, it's building into a lynching. You got your minds all made up and without proof. Well, how much more do we need? He tried to kill Danny right here in camp. Even told you he was gunning for him. You don't know that he accomplished it. Besides, Danny was drunk, he'd always been careless, so it could have been an accident. What about a couple of days ago when the herd almost stampede? He tried to ambush Danny. I didn't shoot Clayton. He was shooting at shadows. Besides, why would he want to kill him then, when he still didn't know Danny was the man he was after? And don't forget, you want to take things into your own hands, be judge and jury. You got to go whole hog. The executioner, too. Well, what are we supposed to do? Let him go. Now, turn him over to the sheriff. Let the law take care of it. One last thing. I know a lot of you think I throw my weight around too much. That's part of being a trail boss. Boss is right, or it moves, the trail's easy. When he's wrong, beef and men are lost and hurt. Either way, it falls back on his shoulders. So if I made a mistake about Royce, it's up to me to correct it. My way. All right, Royce. Let's get moving to the sheriff. <laughs> sure.
sure is nice to see how some of you fellows are smartened up all of a sudden. I still say Royce killed Danny. Well, maybe. That's for the judge and jury to say. Now, how'd you like your crow? Boiled or fried? I'm baked to be just fine. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Sure could have been tight. I'm afraid the sheriff ain't gonna be any easier on you. Oh, now, come on, Mr. Favor. No point in you taking me in. The same thing's gonna happen. You showed him how it was an accident. Showed him how it could have been an accident. That's what it was. Is this under the saddle? That show you, Barry? Wow. I just got stuck there. Even under the saddle blanket? Uh-uh. You put that under there to keep that horse running. He wouldn't have moved with a dead weight hanging from the stirrup. And the battering Danny took could cover the beating you gave him. You can't prove it. Well, it ain't up to me. It's up to a regular judge and jury. So you know it all the time, huh? Let's go. did do it. Sure. I met him on the road coming back from town. He was so drunk he didn't recognize me. He didn't know why I was beating him up. How much he? Oh, now, come on, Favor. You know better than that. Let's go. I can, Mr. Favor. Fine, Mr. Favor. I, I wanted so bad to make up for letting him go. You did fine, my sheep. Just fine. I couldn't shoot. I couldn't shoot at anybody, I guess. Let's just hope you never have to. Those new men. Oh, they're gonna work out just fine. I'll say, boss, um, about Royce. Well, uh, we were all wrong, and the boys wanted me to tell you, so, uh, oh, I'm telling you. So you've told me. Now keep moving. Good for you. Don't get your fur up at me, Jensen. I'll comb it down for you. Now, just take it easy. We're all a little bit edgy now. 
Look, you want me to tell him? What's holding things up? Well, uh, the men, boss, they've been talking. I'll say it for them. We hired on to drive cattle, not get laughed at. Yeah? So? So if you want this herd driven smack through town, down to them holding pens, you better do it yourself. We sure ain't gonna. Is that right, Quince? Well, I figure he's speaking for all of us, Mr. Favor. You see, this whole town's turning out to see us in. And, well, there's no sensible need for 20 men to be pushing nine hitters steer. Well, that's true enough. Two men can handle it. Ready? By the way, everyone's a man of Mr. Favor. Oh, shut up, Mushy. Just for once, will you keep your big mouth shut? Well, where do you think you're going? Well, where else? I watch the taste of your cooking out of our mouths. Never lost a chuck wagon before. Ever before. Well, you tried, Mr. Wishbone. Them cattle almost went over you along with that wagon. Yeah, but it's a cook's responsibility, boy. The wagon and the supplies are his responsibility. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> he just can't hardly hold his head up after something like that. You met him, Mr. Favor, too? Tell you one thing, though, I'm sure I'm not gonna thank Mr. Favor. Not for what happened back at the Devil's Patch Quilt. God, I guess out on the drive, that seemed like a lot of money, huh? I'm flat busted myself. Well, I guess we can count ourselves as mighty lucky. Nobody got killed. Darn fool favor. Had no right turning us into that patch quilt. He was a trail boss, wasn't he? Well, what I would like to know is uh, when do we collect wages now? What makes you think you're going to get paid? Well, we must get paid. Sure we will, just as soon as Favor collects for a herd he didn't deliver. So, we find out anything about a pay yet? Nope. i tell you one thing, if we don't get paid, some of us going to treat Mr. Trail Boss to a Texas knuckle dance. I think the boss has got more to worry about than your Texas knuckle dance. Yeah, what is that? Well, he's taking the tally sheet down to the association right now. How would you like to be the one to tell Brock Dillman that we only brought in nine head? Um, right, that's it, all right. You know how much you cost me, Favor? I get 20 cents a head every steer goes through this office. On account of you, I lost something like $400. Okay. How'd it happen? Where were you when you got teased in this wire? 
I'm half a day below Desert City. I was the first I heard of this railroad car shortage. And I'd have to be Tom Bickle and uh, Great Bend to take bottom dollar for the herd. So? So we ran the legs off of them. By the time we'd crossed the ferry, we'd picked up two days on Bickle. Bickle was still ahead of you, huh? About a half a day. And I figured best bet to push past him and go up the west side of Table Ridge. It was a hard 16-hour drive without water. But when we hit the main trail again... Bickle was still ahead? About an hour's drive. I left only one more chance to beat him into Great Bend. Devil's Patch Quilt. You know how dangerous that pass is this time of the year. We almost made it just another half hour. Almost? You gambled favor and you lost. And you try to explain that, Mr. Teasner, any ways you like. Teasner coming in here himself? I wired him. Come in on the next train. Eight dollars, ten How am I supposed to pay off my crew with that? It's the way the contract reads, two and a half cent, two and a half cent, nine heads, eight dollars and ten cents. If you can't pay off your crew with that, that's your sweat, trail boss. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Well, I was hoping I might be able to get a cash advance on my next drive. I don't figure you'll be making any more drives for us, Favor, or nobody else for that matter. Something fishy here. You're too good. I don't believe you. Look here, Dillman. You remember Charlie Mays? Yeah. No advance. Baylor. Charlie Mays only lost 200 head. You lost a whole herd. No difference. Charlie Mays is drunk. I wasn't. something. You know what? We've got this new rule. Payment in advance. Now, what are you talking about? We sell up like always when I check out. Mr. Favor, we've got this new rule. You see, it's just that I... Yeah, well, you never mind. Yeah. Now, you run along, you get me some hot water. That is, if you're not afraid, I'm going to steal the jug.
Don't you realize I have 19 hands that haven't even got a partial draw on their pay yet? They're hungry, they're tired, they're dirty, they're thirsty. Worst of all, they are broke. Yes, yes, I, I understand. No, sir, I don't think you really do. The most comforting thing they've known in the last couple of months is a hard saddle and a dirty bedroll. Now, they're just liable to turn mean and try to take this town apart. Have you ever seen a crew of sober trail hands bust loose? Well, I... I have nothing to do with that. However, this personal draft of yours for $500, I can't possibly cash it without first checking. Checking with my bank back east, I know, I know, I heard. Yes, that shouldn't take more than a day or two. Mr. Clayton, after all the business I've done with this bank, all of a sudden I'm inconvenienced for a day or two. Yes. Let's face a few facts, Mr. Favor. Prior to this, you've been what we call a good credit risk. On this occasion, however, not only are no monies due you for the delivery of this last herd, there also seems to be a question as to whether there will be any more contracts for you as a trail boss. Under those conditions, I can't just hand you $500. My reserve. It's gold dust. I'll take a hundred silver dollars for it. Nearly enough, but that and forty dollars are all I got. Beer, me with a while of whiskey first. Hey! That ain't gonna help none. We gotta sleep here. I tell you, I've just about had a gut full. Hey! 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 First off, I can't pay you your full wages. Oh. Oh, All right, I know how you feel. That, that's the way it is for now. I'll split everything I do have with you. And when I get more, well, you'll get more. All right, first man, right here. Six dollars. Six dollars? Well, that ain't enough to... I'll be in my room. Yeah, all right. All right. Line up. Well, the way I look at it, any man can make a mistake. Well, you just ain't human unless you make one mistake, right? Yeah, here, uh, get your big six. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I ain't never heard of a man that didn't once do something wrong. What I mean is, uh, well, take me, for instance. Uh, one time we was pushing a big herd of cattle past Amarillo, and uh, this uh, ramrod, well, he wasn't much older than you. And, well, anyway, he, he sends me back to the tail end of the herd, and uh, but uh, to lose a whole herd, I'd never seen that before. Yeah, Quince, uh, you mind stepping aside now and let the other boys have a crack at this big money? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll bet even old George Washington made one mistake. Mr. Favor, it is I, Gustav. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. What is it? I, uh, I do not like to bother you at a time like this, but I, uh... Spit it up, man! What's on your mind? Well, it's, uh... It's this matter of uh, our wages. You see, I, I have a, I have a small ranch and <laughs> a large mortgage. <laughs> Mr. Favor, I'm a family man. Seven hungry mouths to feed. I, I only took this job to, to buy winter food. Mr. Favor, my, my little ones, in here I, 
I'm, I'm deeply concerned for them. Yeah. I, I know, Gustav. Oh, don't worry. I'll get you wages. Yeah, that sounds good. I've got some coming in a couple of days. One way or the other, I'll... I'll get the rest of them. I, I knew it would be all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's me, Mushy. Well, now, I can see that, Mushy. Just wanted to tell you, Mr. Paver, I don't blame you for what happened. Like uh, everyone else does. Well, I know it wasn't your fault, Mr. Paver. So you, you know that, do you, Mushy? Sure I do. Mushy, what if I told you? It was my fault. What if I swore to you on a stack of Bibles that it was my stupidity that lost the herd, huh? I wouldn't believe that, Mr. Faber. What's that? That's thirty-seven dollars I saved. Mr. Wishbone doesn't even know I got it. Oh, Mushy. Uh, look. Well, I know how you need the money, Mr. No, Faber. No, Mushy. Look, I, I, I don't need it really. Well, you keep it, Mr. Faber. Mushy, you hang on to your money now. Come on. No, you keep it. Mr. Mushy, Faber. take your money. I don't need it. I don't want it. All I want is to be left alone. Well, huh? Mr. Faber. Now, come on, Mr. You get out of here. Right now. It. Scat. You, what do you want? Oh, uh, just... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, throw them. Throw them anyways. Bickle crew just rode in. Yeah? I guess it'll take their men an hour or so to get them in the pens. What's on your mind, anyways? Uh, nothing. Well, uh, I was wondering what you're going to tell Mr. Teasner about losing the herd and all. Huh? Well, up there on the patch quill, you were uh, a little steamed up about the whole thing. Yeah, so I was. You said that the drag was split. That uh, when the herd turned, if the drag had pulled around in front of them, they wouldn't have gotten near the cliffs. I was in charge of drag. Yeah, well, the herd's gone. What difference does it make? Quite a bit. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm beginning to see the light. Um, Maybe it's you're thinking of uh, trail bossing for the association, huh? Maybe, but that's not the reason I came up here. You were hot under the collar then. I just wanted to know if when you what could... What I said still goes. Now, let me get this straight. Let's see, since I'm going down the drain anyways, uh, no sense in you being on the hook, too. Is I didn't that say that, no. But that's about the way you see it, huh? All right, that's the way I see it. Well, well, I'll keep that in mind when I talk to Mr. Teasner. I feel like I got the right to know what you're going to say to him. You've got a right to nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, get out of here. Or you'll throw me out? That's right. You don't mean that. Try me. You better get some rest. You look a little tired. Well, there sure ain't no big decision about spending six dollars. Either you drink for an hour or you eat for a week. I feel 
you like I'm coming up in spikes like a cactus. Yo, yo, I got a bit of suspicion your father was a cactus. I think you're right, Mr. Bickle. I think you're right. Hey, it looks like Faber and his crew are holed up in the Drywell Saloon. Now, what say we go over there and congratulate them on beating us to Great Bear? Of course, they had to lose a few cattle to do it. Uh, yeah, yo, uh, them fellas are no more for you and your fooling. Why, Mr. Bickle, I wouldn't think of fun in them, boy. Over there, amongst that despair and heartache, I just thought I might find a few friends to say hello to. Hey, Carl, leave Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, wait till it gets a good start. Hey, Pickle Man! Bye! Can you join me? Never seen you drink straight out of a bottle since you've been trail bossing, Gil. Well, I guess it's sort of like riding a horse. Once you learn, you never quite get out. It's sorry to hear what happened to you up the bench, Will. Oh, yeah. yeah. But can't say I'm sorry you didn't beat us in for the top money, though. The ranches I work for can't afford to practically get away with it like the association can. Way it goes. Win some, lose some. Anything I can do to help, Gil? No, no, thanks anyway. Only a really bad to learn. Heaven is with the bank in town. How's that? For just $500 on a personal draft, I gotta wait two days to get my money. You told me to cover it, didn't you? Like the man said, we are not making loans on personal pledges today, Mr. Baker. Yeah, that bank's gonna give you that $500 if I have to co-sign the note with you. Oh, no, Tom. I couldn't let you do that. Yeah, let me ask you one question. If you were in my shoes and I were in yours, what would the answer be? Tom, you know I'm gonna appreciate this. What are we waiting for, Gil? Mr. Clayton, we've got some business to discuss. Certainly, Mr. Bickle. Have a seat, gentlemen. Now, what can I do for you? It's amazing how hot, hot water can be when you're not used to it. It's on your skull, so. You bet. It felt good, didn't it? Yeah. What do you got to do now? Oh, fine, all righty. You know, with a fresh shave and fresh bath, money in my pocket, I feel like I might even go to church or something. Yeah, well, I ain't get myself something to eat. See, that's a good idea. You know, if I stop and have one drink, I may never eat again. You know what you mean? <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Hey, where you fellas been, huh? You gonna clean up at all? What for? I'm talking about absolute necessities. Uh, have a shot. <laughs> you don't drink. Hey, come on. Come back here. What are you doing? They're sure a lot happier than they were two hours ago. Oh, yeah. It seems like. Say, hey, Tom. There's something I'd do. Uh, I'd like to ask you. What's that? Well, no. You passed the turn off about an hour before we did. You saw the same overcast hanging over the patch quilt. Just supposing you was in the same spot with a run out herd, and you know if you came in second at the railhead that you'd practically have to give the herd away. Now, I don't want to put you in a spot, but 
Well, do you think that there's a chance you, uh, you might have tried to push him across the patch? I might have. Gil, any trail boss might have made the same decision. Thank you, good buddy. I gotta admit, that's a load off my mind. Gil, I hear your drag let you down. Oh? Huh? Just make sure Teasner knows that. Don't let him think that what happened up there was all your fault, if it really wasn't. Charlie Mays? I remember. You remember I killed him? I remember that, too. Tillman, you are getting on my nerve. Now, get your hands off me before I take them off. No. Oh, yeah. You're getting awful sloppy, Dylan. What are you doing drawing standing so close to someone, huh? I can wait, trail boss. Favor. Yeah. Teasner's come in, but he doesn't want to see you yet. Huh? About the people he wants to talk to first. All I can say about Gil Favor is that Gil is one of the best trail bosses in the business. That bar's not sir. Good. I'm very pleased to hear you say that, Mr. Pickle. You see, I find myself in the position of having to move one more herd before winter sets in. Getting a little late in the season, isn't it? It is. I imagine a drive this late will be touch and go in many respects. That's why I need an exceptional man as trail boss. At the moment, I'm considering three men for the job. One of them is you. Another is Gil Favor. Gil's a good man. You'll look a long time before you find a better one, sir. Until his last drive, I would have agreed without question. As it stands now, however, yeah. you drive for small, independent ranches, Mr. Bickle. How many head of cattle do you move in a good year? 1,600? 1,800 at the most? That's about it. An association drover, Mr. Favor, for instance, last year he moved upwards of 6,000 head. At two and a half percent, that is a fairly comfortable income. It sure is. I assume you have no prejudices against working for the association? Do you honestly intend to move another herd this fall? Mr. Pickle, I am known as a rather remorseless businessman. However, I never stoop to small tricks under any circumstances. You haven't answered my question. Well, as a matter of fact, I'd be happy to work for the association. But you see, sir, I... Perhaps you'd be good enough to give me the benefit of your professional opinion regarding the unfortunate loss of Mr. Favor's last herd. Your answers may even give me some insight into your own professional judgment. Now, your herd was barely in advance of Mr. Favor's. You faced approximately the same situation he faced. Why didn't you turn your drive into that shortcut? Well, I... I figured the odds were against me getting through. I... I'm not saying that Faber was wrong. But, sir, I wouldn't have pushed my herd through there for all the tea in China. Now, let me get this straight. You're planning on bringing another herd through this year? Precisely, Mr. Yates being formed at this very moment. 2,200 head. And you're considering three men as your trail boss. Tom Bickle, Mr. Favor, and me. You recall what you told me the last time we met about hoping to work your way up? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. This may be a very rare opportunity, Mr. Yates. Mr. Wish, what? Ain't this what we call eavesdropping? Yeah. We ain't supposed to. Will you shut up? 
bad as I want to hurt of my own. I don't plan on running down Mr. Favor just to get it. All I want is the truth, good or bad. I've worked for Gil Favor a long time. As far as I'm concerned, he's a top trail boss all the way down the line. Then you feel he was right turning into the devil's patch of quilt. Mr. Teasner, I'm just his ramrod. I'm supposed to do a job. Not pass judgment on whether he's right or wrong. And you would have made the same choice he made. Well, I didn't say that. What if you had been trail boss, Mr. Yates? Would you have taken that shortcut, knowing how risky it is, how dangerous it is this time of year? Look, Mr. Teasner, a lot of things happened up there. It's kind of confusing. He might have even made it if it hadn't been for a number of things. Did you by any chance voice an opinion to Mr. Favor concerning the advisability of taking this shortcut in the first place? Yeah. What opinion? Well, I'm afraid that's between Mr. Favor and me. And circumstances have proven you right, haven't they? Yeah, but I'm wrong a lot of the time. Well, thank you, Mr. Yates. I'll let you know what I decide by the end of the day. Concerns you and me. Miss Catherine, do you have any difficulty getting what I wanted? Oh, no, sir. When I told Mr. Clayton it was for you, he was most cooperative. Thank you. It would appear your suspicions are not altogether groundless. To favor his personal draft are five hundred dollars, co-signed by Mr. Bickle. I figured he was too friendly with that independent to suit my taste. It would have been worth a considerable amount to Mr. Bickle to guarantee that his herd reached Great Bend first. What do you think? I think we lost a whole herd. I think anybody had been a fool to turn into patch quilts this time of year. And I think Gil Favor is no man's fool. That weapon of yours. You certainly keep it in magnificent condition. It's a Navy special. I think it is time that we had a talk with Mr. Favor. Season is ready to talk. Association men. They ain't exactly prone to forgive and forget. Hey, Mr. Pickle! Yo, yo. I'll buy you a drink. 
drink. Okay. Mr. Faber, you cost the association a considerable amount of money, didn't you? Yes, sir. All right. If you have any excuses or explanations, I'm anxious to hear them. Well, as you already know, Mr. Teasner, the important things seem to be to beat Tom Bickle into the railroad. I'll just wander over there and see what's going on. I'll take you along. No, you better not. Boss might not want us both pushing into his personal affairs. It's difficult to believe this could have happened to a man of your experience. How could it be? Come in, Mr. Yates. Could it be, Mr. Faber, that that herd was as good as lost? The moment you turned into Devil's Patch Quilt. Well, if you want to put it that way, you, you could say the herd was as good as lost the first day I took it out on the trail. Well, perhaps that's not as improbable as it sounds. What do you mean? I have here your personal draft, co-signed by one Thomas Bickle. What are you accusing me of, anyway? Well, perhaps you'd like to explain. No! Now you get this straight. I don't mind being accused of making a bad mistake. Even an association man can do that. Mr. Favor. I don't mind being accused of stupidity. You can fire me, you can try to run me out of the territory. But if you start spreading it around that I was paid to lose that herd, you are going to make me very unhappy. Mr. Favor, you didn't let me finish. I have a telegram here. It says, in effect, that you have ample funds in your bank account to cover that personal draft. I'm convinced there was no collusion between Bickle and you. Oh, you see, there was no real need for your accusations or your anger. However, it still leaves us with our basic problem. Was the loss of that herd due to outright negligence, stupidity, or was it just one of those unavoidable things that happened? I still have two questions. I'll answer them the best I can. Mr. Yates here tells me that you said, quite forcibly, I believe, that the drag was at fault. That through proper action, the drag could have saved most of the herd. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's what I said, all right. But that's not the whole of it. You see, at the time, I just seen my whole herd go under. I was more than a bit upset. The truth of the matter is, no one on the Lord's green earth, Mr. Yates or any man, could have turned those beeves. Second question. Was there anyone to blame except yourself? No, sir. Absolutely no one except myself. That answers my question. Bank draft, Mr. Faber, for fifteen hundred dollars. It should be enough for you to pay up your crew and to cover the initial expenditures for this new drive, if you can get a crew together. Oh, um, no, of 
objections, gentlemen. I think Mr. Teasner knows what he's doing. Yes. This late in the season, every day counts. We need a ready form crew. Men who are used to working together. You have to work for you again. Where's the herd being formed up? How many head? Roughly 2,200 for Lazy Bar Rex just outside of Victorville. In Frank Turley's place. I'll need you there, full crew, ready to move within five days. It means you've got to get started today. Think you can raise a crew? I don't know, but I'm certainly going to try. He'll get one. Rowdy, spread the word. I want 20 men in front of this table at 6 o'clock, ready to ride. All my men are welcome. If any of them can't make it or don't want to, then any of Tom Bickle's men will do. And if Wishbone and Mushy are interested, we'll get a new check wagon at Victorville. I'll be over at the bank cashing this. Oh, yeah. I'll be right with you. Uh, Mr. Yates, I believe you heard my decision. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Except I have to admit I'm a little confused. Mr. Yates, I raised trotters back east. And the best horse in my stable is named Big Dan. Two years ago, he lost a race that he should have won hands down. Cost me $1,200. But he hasn't lost a race since, and he's made me ten times at $1,200. Yeah, well, that's not quite the same thing, is it? I mean, that's gambling. Listen, son. Every time a cattleman turns around, he's gambling. On whether to ship this year and break even, or hold off a year and maybe make a big profit, or take a big loss. Gambles on drought, flash floods, thunderstorms, Indians, just about anything you can name. But more than anything else, he gambles on the man who drives his herd for him. Man or horse. I want my money on the best that's available. Well, then you knew all along you were going to use Mr. Favor, right? No, Mr. Yates. There's another way that a horse and a man are alike. Yeah. They can both lose something almost overnight. Pride, or confidence, or integrity, or whatever it is that it takes to win. Oh, I didn't make up my mind about Gil Favor until a few minutes ago. Well, if you're still Mr. Favor's ramrod, I imagine he's curious to find out whether he can raise that crew. Thanks, Mr. Teasner. Oh. Well, what time is it, anyways? Oh, I don't know. Tell me more than a few minutes after, though. That's what he's doing. Yeah. All right, horse. We're gonna be together all the way to Victorville. Now, if you're good to me, I'll turn you loose when I get my new chuck wagon. All right, let's stop milling around and mount up. Better 
get them as far out of town as we can before they change their minds tonight and decide to ride back in. Hey, boss! Take your feet up, Max. Come on, F. Now, what in the ever-loving would that be? That extra hand I was telling you about. I can sure vouch for him. Well, you think it's sober enough to even ride out of town? Well, I admit he ain't too handy on the ground, but once we get him in the fork and saddle, he'll do. All right, paste him together, pitch him in the saddle. Come on. Well, can I grab yourself a handful of horse? Not this time, Gil. Mr. Faber! Sir, what's that? What if you reach Devil's Patch Quilt with this new herd and find yourself in the same position as last time? What do you think you'll do? One thing's certain, sure. If those clouds are hanging low over the hills again, I'm going to sit there and think about it for a good five minutes more. And then? Then? Then I just may try to push them through again. Well, you ain't going to get nothing done sitting around here. Okay, let's go!